Hi, I'm Wayne Hellman, and this is the third in a series of SmartFox Server 2X video tutorials. In this episode, we're going to walk through setting up the Flex environment to create a basic chat application using the SmartFox Server 2X API. First, let's open up Flash Builder and create a new Flex project. Let's call this My Chat. Click Finish. Now that's going to give us a default template. The first thing we're going to do is add initialize to our application and call an init method. So let's go ahead and create a script block. And insert our init function here. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is to actually get the SmartFox Server 2x API. So let's go to the properties of our project and go to the Flex Build Path and click on the Add SWIC button. From here, we're going to browse to the SmartFox Server 2x AS3 API. This is generally found in the server installation directory under Client Flash API. I'm just going to select that SWIC and click Open. OK and OK. And that's going to appear in our reference libraries. Now, if you're using the Flash IDE, this will be slightly different. In that case, you would add the SWIC to your library. So I've got a little cheat sheet that I'm just going to reference here. And I'm going to pull a panel and put that definition right here. Now this panel has a button for our login, a text area for a chat log, a text input for our chat input, and a button to send our chat. So the first thing we're going to do here is add click handlers for both buttons. And we're going to leave those handlers alone for now. Let's create a private var here of type SmartFox. Now you'll notice that automatically imports the SmartFox class. So this is the core SmartFox client class. And in our init method now, let's instantiate this class SmartFox, and it takes one Boolean which turns debugging on or off. I'm going to turn that on. And what that is going to do is it's going to show us full dumps of all the messages that we receive. So let's go back to our login click handler. Now this method is basically going to initiate our connection to the server. So we're going to have to load an XML file with the server configuration and try and connect to the server. Let's go back to my cheat sheet here. And I've got a SmartFox XML template. And we are going to create a new file. And let's put that in source and call it config.xml. And we're going to paste in that template. Now our IP is going to be our local IP. That's the server I'm running off of. And if you remember from episode two, we created a new zone with a custom port. So let's put port 5151. And the zone was my new zone. Let's save that. And we can close it. So now that we have our config XML, we need a way for our client to load and parse that information. This is really simple with SmartFox Server 2X. Let's go ahead here and use our SmartFox client to load config. And we are going to put in our config XML that we just created. And behind the scenes, the SmartFox API will attempt a connection to the server. So we're going to have to listen for a response from the server in the form of an event. So let's go back up to our init method. And 
again with the client we are going to add an event listener and we're going to add the SFS event type which is not yet imported so let's go import that and we can see all the available events. Now the one we're going to use right now is the connection event. So let's handle this with on connection and quickly create that method. Now the SFS event object that's passed has a params property that contains a success boolean. So let's check that boolean and if true, we're going to add a line to our chat log. This. And if false, we're going to say failed. Now, new to SmartFox Server 2x is the way we send requests to the server. All requests to the server are now performed in a similar way. A new request class is instantiated, and we send that to the server with the smartfox.send method. So here, we're going to instantiate a new login request. Now the login request takes a number of parameters, however, we're just going to pass an empty string as the username, and that's going to log us in as a guest. And here, our smart fox is going to use the send method, and it's going to send our instantiated logon request to the server. Now the way we're going to listen for that logon success or fail is with another event listener. So let's go back up to our init method and add another event listener. And this time it's going to be a login event. And that is going to be handled with on login. So let's go ahead and create that event listener. And the first thing we're going to do is inform that user that their login was successful. At this point in time, we're going to need to create a, another request, this time to join a room. So we're going to use the join room request. And if you remember in episode two, we created a room in our new zone called the lobby. So let's try and join that room. Again, we're going to use our SFS smart fox to send the request. And unless we're in a room, we're unable to send any chat messages. So we need to receive an event that we have joined a room. So let's go up to our init method and add another event listener. This time it's going to be a room join event. And we're going to handle that with on room join. So let's go down and create that method. Let's create a local variable of type room. 
And in the event params, we can grab a reference to the just joined room. Now let's let the user know as well that they've just joined that room. And just do room dot name. Now we're ready to send and receive chat messages. Let's go back to our click handler for our chat button. And we're going to do a quick check just to see if that button has anything in it. If so, we're going to create a new request, but this time it's going to be a public message request. And we're going to pass the content of our chat input as the message string. And that's really all we need. And we're going to send that to the server. And that should be sent. Now we need to add an event listener to listen for incoming chat messages. So back up to our init method and add another event listener. This time it's going to be on public message. And we're going to listen for that on public message. And let's create One more event listener down here. Now here, what we're going to do is get the user of type user event params sender. And we're going to use that user object to identify our message user.name. And the event params also contains our message. So the last thing I'm going to do here is just add some line breaks. And I'm going to reset our chat input once we send a message. And now we're ready for compiling. Let's hit the debugger and see what we get. So here's our login button on our application. Let's click login. We connect successfully, logged on, and joined the room, the lobby. So let's send a message. And there we go. Now, obviously, this isn't a very complex example. However, it demonstrates the ease with which you can create applications with SmartFox. In our next episode, I'll show you how to get started on extension development and add custom features to your application. Remember to visit smartfoxserver.com for updates and support.